On PM Express tonight, everybody watches television. Everybody watches television one time or the other. You may actually, actually also listen to radio. You do one of those things. But can you imagine that in a country like Ghana with the sprawling, proliferating uh, broadcasting landscape with television stations popping up um, quite you know, easily and radio stations as well, we don't have a functioning, a proper broadcasting law exclusively so to regulate the space. And then content has become a big problem also. A case in point, the recent murder of a 10-year-old boy in Kaswa. Why? As the police tell us, the two uh, suspects, teenagers, were influenced by the television they were watching. And that has sparked a conversation. The information ministry seized the moment to have a conversation about the broadcasting law and content scrutiny. We're going to have a conversation about that, but it is a binary conversation and which is a fine line that information ministry must be walking between regulating or censoring. Well, an attempt was made before to bring a broadcasting law. GIBA, which is a broadcasting association, said that law was not regulating or censoring. The court threw it out. That is a challenge that this particular initiative is facing. We're going to be delving into that here on PM Express shortly. So there was an engagement over the weekend um, with stakeholders deliberating on this particular matter. What did they agree? There was a communique that came out. You may have heard bits of it, but let me break it down for you. They came together and agreed to address the questions of unethical broadcast. We're going to be delving into this. So what is unethical broadcast? For me, that is the fundamental point. But how do you deal with unethical broadcast? Because the word unethical means it is not a question of law, right? What something that is unethical is not illegal. I mean, but you need to deal with it according to law. And so how are they going to deal with this? Because it's going to be a challenge. We're going to be interrogating that shortly here on PM Express. And the stakeholders agreed to set up what they call a joint stakeholders group uh, under the National Media Commission. And that group will do a lot of things. Right, and this will examine reports of unethical content, um, invoke the powers of the National Communications Authority, uh, and keep, of course, take punitive action against offending parties. But can you really take legally backed sanctions for ethical breaches? Fundamental question. We'll be getting into that today here on PM Express. They also laid out a series of steps that they want to take. Stakeholders will sign up to a memorandum of cooperation. What is that, by the way? We'll get into that. Within 14 days, it's been at least three days now or so uh, since that communique was issued. And so that the, this is counting. Has anything been done on this so far? We'll get into that shortly. Uh, on the back of that meeting, the USAN is signed this particular document. Now, key to the arrangement, we know now, is the setting up of the joint stakeholder group and as a committee of the National Media Commission uh, in accordance with law, we set them up in the constitution. There are key individuals and groups that form part of this, and you see them here. The NMC itself, the Communications Authority, the Broadcasting Association, the GJA, are all members of this particular committee. Now, the committee's duties will essentially to monitor broadcasting landscape and identify this so-called unethical broadcast content. And so what is it? They begin to give us a sense of what they're talking about here that broadcast that is offensive to national security again you, the, you you are in a territory of definitions who defines what is offensive to national security who defines what national security is these are big complex questions we'll get into that public morality what is public morality who defines that um, against offensive to public order against the reputations, rights and freedoms of other persons. Uh, these are complex territories. This is not an easy walk um, for the stakeholders involved in this conversation. Now the committee's duties extend also to issuance of, so if they identify this offensive um, or unethical content, they will do a series of things. Warnings will be issued, your license could also be redrawn as they specify. Now, there is also now a conversation, two-pronged. Now, this, the first bit is what we've talked about, the unethical content. And then there's the, uh, the draft legislation that you're going to look at, the broadcasting bill. A form of it emerged um, with the NMC that went to court. The court shut it down. They also agreed 
to examine key issues being considered in the development of this broadcasting law, um, further agree to engage the judiciary to do something very important. That you know, distinction between the gatekeeping role and the protection of freedoms of media and expression, that tightrope must be walked finely as they do this. Uh, the ministry also undertook to secure the needed approval. They'll have to go to parliament with this and they've committed that once the group, the stakeholders agree on what the content should be, they will head uh, to uh, parliament for an approval. Now, this is interesting. Now, this conversation is happening within, a, it's, it's, it's being had within a context because we've done this before. We've tried to regulate this space. This space from where I'm talking to you, they've tried to regulate it before and then it sets up a fight between Giba and NMC. What was the fight all about? The, the GIBA, which is the Independent Broadcasters Association, they went to the Supreme Court to strike out the new law, which of course requires media owners to seek content approval, which is a specific issue they had, uh, from the National Media Commission before publication. Because the argument is that this is nothing more than censorship, right? And that and it impose fines if you don't comply, including imprisonment, just for violating content, right? And they wanted all these parts struck out uh, by the court and that they believe, and they quoted the constitution, that not even the government, nobody um, can censor um, content. And guess what? What the court ruling was? They struck, strikes out the NMC standard content regulation uh, saying it has no legal grounding uh, in the bylaw and is therefore inconsistent with the constitution. So that was thrown out, crippled the NMC's powers. We're back at this. Have we learned the lessons from here? And how do we apply it to this conversation? This is critical to everything that you enjoy on television and listen on radio. So you want to stay with us. We're going to be bringing in the people who understand this to break it down for you here on PM Express after the break. And thank you for staying with us here on PM Express. Uh, my guest is joining me uh, via Zoom tonight is Andrew Danso, uh, an Inkra, who is the uh, president of the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association. Uh, Andy, thank you very much for your time here on, on PM Express. Uh, also joining me tonight is Suleiman Abrama. He's executive director of the Media Foundation for West Africa. Um, Mr. Brahma, thank you for your time on PM Express. Thank you for having me once. Great. I want to start with you, Andy. Um, great to have you. Um, I, I read the communique, and I'm assuming that you are part of the team, uh, you know, the stakeholders who pen their signatures to this, and so you agree with the contents. I, part of there there are a few steps that must be taken, including the uh, signing of the a memorandum of cooperation within 14 days, um, you know, on the back of that meeting. Is there any progress report on that in terms of um, where the stakeholders are in signing this memoranda? Well, so I guess it's early days yet for us to, but then the point is um, the e communique came out on Sunday into Monday morning. Um, I think it's still early for us to come to terms as to when to meet, where to meet, and what, when exactly to start work. Um, we have 14 days to do this, so I'm expecting that within the course of this week, uh, we'll be able to do this. But let me first and foremost also um, send out a word of um, recommendation to uh, the Ministry of Information and especially the Minister for this great work. Um, it's been a bold step. The unfortunate incidents that happened in Kaswa, um, not counting or probably um, having sets the ball rolling, we may say that this is some work which has been going on in the past and has brought it to the fore. Uh, we believe strongly that um, if we continue with um, the favor, the heat with which we have started it, we'll be able to get far with it. Okay. Uh, thankfully, joining us on the phone is Yaobuidi uh, um, Of course, he is the uh, chairman of the National Media Commission. Uh, Mr. Buda Yaobuidi thank you for your time here on PM Express. Hi, back here. Great. 
Um, my, my only fear is that I'm on the road and the line may cut at any time. Okay, let's 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 get the best bits then from you before uh, that happens, yeah. if it does at all. Uh, so, on the back of this memorandum that you signed, um, I mean, is there clarity now? Because I know one of your biggest concerns had been that the NMC lacks the, the power, the legal powers to do what we all expect you to do. On the back of what you, the consultations, is there clarity now on the way forward to empowering both yourself and the uh, NCA to crack down on um, content that is injurious to all of us? No, that, you know, this is a temporary measure. Mm. As we wait for the passage of the back end law, so it's a temporary thing. You know, in the in in the mechanism under the National Media Commission, I think that section ten of the media National Media Commission law, and the law empowers the commission to constitute a committee made up not just of members but with outsiders, which can take decisions that can then be adopted by the commission, you know, and so uh, that is on the back of that. Are we going to develop proper mechanisms for the function of this committee together with the Attorney General's office so that there will be legality and clarity about what is possible and what is not possible for the time? I'll come to talk about the broadcasting bill shortly. I'll bring you Suleiman Abraham, but since I have you from the NMC, I need to ask you this. I read a communique and it talks about, um, you know, monitoring for what they call unethical content, which is yeah. what the uh, committee's work will do. And it, it talks about, so when you find it, it lists a number of things that could happen, recommendation for issuance of warnings, even frequency authorization, suspensions of frequency authorizations. But the key question remains, that unethical content is not illegal content. You see, unethical content is not illegal content. Yes, it's not illegal. Unethical content so, is yeah, not illegal see, content. The thing, the thing is that, you know, sometimes when people talk about freedom, they forget about their responsibility. So, I mean, I mean that we are free to do what you want to do, but after you have done it, if it is offense somebody, you have to pay the price. Mm -hmm. So and and you know, there's Africa one 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 six four, which talks about the need for laws in the interest of public morality, public order, national security and all that. And so when you do anything against those things and I mean you are sanctioned, it is not interference with the freedom. I mean, Suleiman Abrahma, let me bring you on that question of, of the unethical content as has been identified by the stakeholders, and I know you were part of it. Um, if you're talking about, and this is going to trigger sanctions, including withdrawal of suspension of licenses, right? Um, there's a, how difficult is it to enforce sanctions such as has been prescribed against unethical Content. I mean, the use of the word unethical itself connotes a setting uh, absence of legality in the context of the application of the of the laws. Is that a challenge? No, uh, Evans. I don't think that is a challenge. When the Constitution says that the National Media Commission shall uh, adopt all measures possible. May have lost him there um, with his with his Zoom. Um, hopefully, we could we could get him back up uh, to address that that question. Um, but whilst we wait for that, let me po possibly go back to Yabuda Yebuafo on this on this matter. Um, so, Mr. Yabuda Yebuafo, um, so where we are right now with this formation of this um, you know committee, um, it, it, in terms of the roadmap uh, timelines, I understand 14 days. You want to sign this cooperate, cooperation memorandum. Um, has any conversation started about finalizing this for implementation to start? The commission is meeting with the Minister of Information today. And subsequently, the Secretary has been mandated to liaise with the Office of the Attorney General and to the other institutions that are to constitute the body so that we will come to some common understanding of the framework before implementation, you know. And as I said, 
under the National Media Commission, where the commission, when they look into matters, can make reference to the appropriate relevant public institution or body to take what the functions that are up within the limits of that organization. The problem for the commission has been the lack of collaboration and support in terms part, where this we in some circumstances had made recommendations to the NCA and it had not been implemented. And we ourselves cannot implement what we had recommended. But with this understanding of all of us, and with the National Media Commission in the lead, we anticipate that we make progress. Our intention is not to punish. Our intention is to ensure compliance and for people to do what is, is in the best interest of all of us. So people should not fear that we are going to clamp down on on, on decisions and all that. We want sanity to prevail in the airway. What the work of the committee, among others, from the community includes monitor the broadcasting landscape and identify and examine complaints upon ethical broadcast content and provide the early warning system for flagging such unethical broadcasts. From what I understand, the NMC already has you know mechanisms in place to do this one the monitoring and the early warning system you you, you already have that you already do that right yeah the difference is that see whatever the nmc has been doing it's more of persuasion than enforcement for instance we we have there are many instances where they will have appeared before the commission they have accepted liability they have been asked to go and do the necessary thing. They go back and they renege. And the commission cannot enforce that. You know, so it has more been appeal, 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 and persuasion than, than enforcement. But in the specific instance of even the publication of rejoinder, it is enforceable only by the High Court and not at the level of the commission. You know, so that has been the lacuna in terms of the, the National Media Commission implementing some of the recommendations. Because, you see, at the heart of it is the question of self-regulation. And you know, globally, self-regulation has been the most effective means of, of maintaining I mean, media relevance. But somehow, in our circumstances, there are many in the media who are very unwilling to self-regulate. Um, Mr. Suleiman Abrahma has joined us on the phone as we uh, try and fix um, his Zoom connection. Mr. Abrahma, you, you were responding to that um, concern that some have expressed, that uh, if you start talking about an ethical content, you may have a challenge applying the law in enforcing, um, you know, breaches of same. What's your, what's your, what's your take on that? Well, uh, I think that we do understand the challenge uh, bit of I mean, the issue between ethics and legality. So quite often, it's not everything that is ethical that may be legal, and it's not everything that is legal that may be ethical. But when the Constitution says in Article 167 that the National Media Commission shall take all appropriate steps to ensure the highest journalistic standards, I don't think that the framers of the Constitution were having in mind only things that are legal. Indeed, the higher general standard, in my view, is more about ethical issues in the media than even issues of legality. Now, this is something that the Commission over the years has not been able to do, as the chairman um, was, was alluding to. And so, as we all, and of course you do know, that my day job is to ensure freedoms of the media, protect journalists, work with the media to ensure capacity building, and so on and so forth. So I'll be the last person to endorse anything that is intended to either censor or undermine the freedoms that the Constitution guarantees uh, our media. However, as I've always said, an unregulated media space can in itself be more dangerous to media freedom perhaps than anything because that then eventually leads us to chaos, leads us to, you know, conducts that people may end up taking the law into their own hands. Imagine what happened in Kaswa. If uh, the allusion that the, guy, the, the one of them said 
Well, they saw this specialist on television or whatever. Assuming if that television station were to be located in Kaswa, it would not be surprising that you see a mob mobilizing to go and burn down the station. So I think that we appreciate the, the, the whole fine line between ethics and legality. But when it comes to the media state, I think what is even quite crucial is to ensure that ethical standards are upheld. Stay with me. I want to bring in um, the Giba uh, president on this question about unethical uh, content. Um, Mr. Danzo, what's your understanding of, of this? And I wonder what, what, your, what your members' view is on this, on this enforcement of, against breaches when it comes to unethical content. Can you unmute for me, please? Sorry. Um, you would also appreciate the fact that when we talk about ethics, um, ethics lies with regulation, some aspect of regulation. Ethics has to do also with morality. And the laws, the Constitution gives the National Media Commission the right to make laws that borders on morality. In fact, as we speak, we have laws on morality. Mm. Um, we are not allowed even to show certain content, um, the possession of it in itself even being criminal in the country already. Then again, when you talk about ethics, there are guidelines that guide a particular society, i.e. what they, they, they receive as good or bad. And so within even a framework, we already have certain ethics that we abide by. Now, the, media, the National Media Commission itself has its um, rules and guidelines. Um, the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association also has what we call the Code of Conduct that um, directs the way we conduct ourselves, such that if you're a member of GIBA, you are supposed to go by the Code of Conduct when you fall foul of it we are able to draw your attention to it and to tell you how to go about this. So basically, without even having this printed out in law, these are things that bind us. In recent times, when the issue of alcohol advertising became the talk of town and everybody was discussing it, ethically, we met together and we decided that we would play alcohol adverts after a certain time. I'm not sure it was based on law, even though we knew that um, we needed to do things that were in line with our public order and public health issues. We all agreed that we will do it from a certain time to a certain time. So when you talk about ethics, as far as I'm concerned, it is something which we bind ourselves with already within our society. We, res we, we respect ethics. And so even when in the absence of law, I believe strongly that we can work within the framework of ethics that will be set out. Again, let us say that um, the National Media Commission for this time, what is going to happen is that we are all coming together to think through what is being done, such that, you know, when um, you have issues that pertains to censorship, it is when something has been done and it has to be presented to somebody for somebody to look at it or let a group of people to look at it and to say, you can't do this, you can't do that. That is where we have the problem. And that is also what the constitution of this country frowns upon. And so once we are sitting together to bind ourselves to a certain way of doing things, um, probably you can call it self-censoring, self but in the end, we have some kind of regulation that will sanitize the media space. And we believe it is good for us all. Okay. I mean, some have said this week that the GIBA, if GIBA had allowed the um, first attempt by the NMC to go ahead in terms of regulating the space, we will not be having this conversation today with LI2224. Um, do, you accept, do you accept that criticism? No, 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 no. It sounds like boarding a vehicle that has faulty brakes and you know this and you want to join the vehicle and speed downstream, I mean, downhill. That is how it sounds like. Definitely, we're going into a ditch. Um, if and Giba, Giba, Giba is not the High Court. Giba is not the Supreme Court. 
we made a presentation to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court sided with us. The Supreme Court saw view in what we were saying. And the Supreme Court said at that time, the constitution, the laws in the country did not allow you to do this. Um, it isn't like Giba didn't want it. Giba is in full support of regulation. Giba is in full support of whatever we've done um, to sanitize the media space. We support this particular move. We are fully involved in it. Um, we called for this several times and we are happy this has happened and we are going to support it till the end. We'll make sure that what we want happen will happen. Um, Mr. Bugidi, that must, that must give you some, some cause for comfort. It is not that we, it gives me some sort of comfort. It is that which must be done. The thing, the thing is that the media are there to serve the interests of the people. And if at any point the people feel that the media are not serving their interests and they voice it out, it is up to those operating the media to listen to the voice of the people so that they will become relevant and recognized. And, and I think that the, the approach... We, you know, we had had discussions with Giva on some of these things. And it turned out that most of the charlatanic that we see, the people are not members of the Giva. And that is one thing that also must, must be clarified. If it were within the fold of Giva, we'll have resolved it last year, because last year we had some fruitful engagement with Giva. And it was out of those engagements that we realized that most of those people who are doing this thing are not members of Giba. And in fact, it's difficult even to locate the, the, the addresses of some of, of the people. For instance, let me tell you, ABSC, after, because they used the address and wanted to reach some of them, they couldn't. I mean, they fell on us that can we help them identify the addresses of these people. We ourselves have written many, many letters, and sometimes we cannot even locate the offices of some of them. So, I mean, I am very happy that at the end of the day, we have all agreed that there is a need for collaboration. And that the fact that the media commission has not been given the regulations and it, their guidelines do remain guidelines, but we are willing, I mean, to ensure that people comply even though they are guidelines, we are not just leaving it completely to the discretion of individuals, but at least to use some level of requirement of compliance. At the end of the day, it will near to the benefit of the people of Ghana. And the National Media Commission will be happy for that. Um, interesting points there. I want to come back to you, Andy. Andy, very quickly. I know from the stakeholders forum that you and others are expected to submit memos on the draft broadcasting bill. Let me ask you, for Giba, what is your red line? What are the key issues that you would you you won't you won't entertain in a broadcasting bill, for example? At least drawing from the lessons from the LI two 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 four. What what are the key issues for you that you wouldn't entertain broadly? So basically, it's the same conversation. Um, would want the freedom. Would want to safeguard the freedom of the press. We want to safeguard the freedom of um, the media in Ghana. Would want to make sure that nothing is placed in there that will mean somebody will have to submit some document. Um, will have to submit some content to an entity which will look at it before passing it. Uh, would want to make sure that there is no kind of control or uh, any force from government side. You see, again, the network, the, the system that we operate in is a bit um, dicey. For instance, when you look at the NCA, the composition of the NCA, the NCA is an extension of the Ministry of Communication, which is an extension of the executive. So when you leave um, responsibility to the NCA to shut down radio stations or television stations to revoke their licenses, this is an issue because then you begin to ask yourself, based on what are they doing this? And they can come up at any time and say, this is against national security. This is against, um, you know, what do they have to, for instance, talk about morality, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some of the things that we, we are looking for. And then the kind of um, independence of the National Media Commission will be looked at in this area. 
one key area that Deba has been talking about, which we are looking forward to, which will be discussed in this particular broadcasting law, uh, infrastructure that are built by government with taxpayers' money. It should not come under the control of government. It should be some autonomous agency. For instance, like when the NMC is allowed to appoint um, the board of directors of um, GBC, the state-owned uh, media, graphic, new times, it should be the same with any other infrastructure that comes up. But where you have government um, appointing the board of directors, for instance, of uh, the national monopolistic DTT platform, that becomes an issue. And this is something um, we hope we'll be able to get stated out in this particular broadcasting bill. I'm not sure how that will be done, but I am very sure that at least we will be able to get in there some statement which points to that. Um, when we have done this, we can talk about the liberty and the freedom that we are expecting. Again, another aspect of um, this law, what we are looking forward to, is the interference of government in deciding, for instance, um, who goes to the National Media Commission, what the National Media Commission should do. I'm not saying this is happening yet, but then when you have a law which ties your hand and government can then impose on you uh, the membership of the National Media Commission, etc., etc., that will be back to square one. But, so but these I thought, are few but I things the we'll be looking out for. But I thought the there are other Ms. things Andy, that we hope will be catered for Andy, in the I thought, law. But I when the, the time comes, I thought the membership of the NMC is settled in the Constitution, Chapter Twelve. Um, Andy, do you hear yes. my question? Yes. yes, the membership of the NMC is settled. It's settled. So, yeah, so I'm aware of that. So, so government definitely can't doesn't have any control over over that. Can manipulate that process, can it? Or you're talking about the appointment? No, but of this a, is a new bill. No, we are talking about the new bill um, such that you don't have certain clauses in the bill which makes certain aspects of existing laws much weaker, or you can manipulate into it. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, what we are trying to say is that if we don't take advantage, we don't um, relax and allow this bill to all this new law to take advantage of existing law such that um, you, you, you have a... This is what happened with the LI-2224. And if Giba had not looked into it, this, if, assuming the LI-2224 was in operation today, we would have had a situation where now people can be sanctioned for what they write because they did not submit their content uh, to be vetted or anything of the sort. These are some of the things we are talking about. I mean, Mr. Brahma, do you sympathize with Gibber's concerns as we begin to draft this broadcasting bill? It's important that we all uh, keep a close eye to ensure that not only smuggle in that would take away uh, the fundamental rights that you know the media must have. But again, the important thing is that there cannot be any law that will be supreme over the Constitution. Unfortunately, the Constitution provides a lot of guarantees when it comes to media freedom. And that is why, for example, when Giba uh, went to the Supreme Court on the matter of LI-2224, uh, the Supreme Court ruled in its favor that what the NMC wanted to do bordered on censorship. So in as much as we would want to keep a close eye on the development of the bill that is being proposed, I think that ultimately the Constitution would always uh, reign supreme. And so um, I thought we should have fears um, as have been expressed by, by my good friend, Mr. Aninkra. Again, apart from the constitutional guarantees, I think that the processes that are being embarked upon is quite um, transparent, and in an era of uh, participatory legislative making, um, we certainly will make sure that our inputs are heard, our views are made known, and in the end, I doubt that we would have any piece of legislation that would undermine the constitutional provision when it comes to freedoms of the media. What, what specifically, um, and, and this is from an advocacy civil society point of view, and I ask your opinion because I know your organization does work across the continent when it comes to media regulation, media freedom. What specifically would you want to see in this broadcasting law that we are drafting? Well, first, I think that 
we have to recognize the primacy of the National Media, Com National Media Commission in the regulation of our media industry. Sometimes we make the mistake of literally equating the National Media Commission with the National Communications Authority. Mm. I think the Communications Authority has a thorough scope in terms of its role within the media space when it comes to uh, managing the spectrum, allocating frequencies, and so on and so forth, which in my view uh, isn't the best of practice. Because in converged environments such as the UK, you have the one body that authorizes and allocates the frequency, manages it, and also regulates content. In our situation, we have the case where one body is supposed to be managing the spectrum and all of that, and another body is supposed to be NMC managing content. I think what this bill must do is to enhance the powers of the National Media Commission. And that is important because, as you rightly said, Article 1661 talks about the composition of the National Media Commission. And nobody can determine who the DJA must send as a representative or who the academic training institutions must send, who GIBA must send, you know, who the advertisers, uh, advertising agencies must send, uh, Match and Magrat, the Muslim uh, group, the Christian group, the uh, uh, Bar Association, Parliament, and so on and so forth. So we are we are guaranteed the independence of the Media Commission at all times. And I think that given the functions provided for in the Constitution, if we have a law, a broadcasting bill that further enhances the NMC with more power with provision of more resources, because even if the NMC is given the powers and it lacks the resources to enforce those powers, we wouldn't make any positive uh, move on that. So I think the right thing to happen in this bill would be for the NMC to be empowered, to be made mandatory for the commission to be provided the, the necessary resources. We are at a time, for example, where the commission must have regional offices across the entire country. The, the, the NCA, which is not even the regulator, technically speaking, has offices in some regions. So why wouldn't the NMC have the same thing? If you go to Upper East, how can the NMC sit here in Accra and decide to monitor content that is being broadcast in Kusau or in Burundi or in another local language? Same for Upper West, same for Northern Region, same for Savannah, and so on and so forth. So such a bill must make a provision that allows the NMC to set up regional offices that will have the capacity to monitor local language content and then recommend the appropriate you know, sanctions as and when such uh, sanctions are necessary. And for me, once we do that, uh, we would have taken a very big step towards sanitizing our airways. And as I said, without which, you know, we will be seeing chaos going forward. I mean, Mr. Yabuda Ibafo, I mean, it appears that we are going back to putting the NMC at the heart of this conversation, that whatever bill is going to come out, I mean, I think there's consensus that the NMC should be the arrowhead. But that conversation must come with um, equitable devotion or a lot allocation of resources, uh, must it not, for your work? Because I've heard a lot about how the NMC is, is starved of resources to do his work. Do, have you seen a, a, a commensurate push towards doing just that, giving you the resources that you need to work? Well, you know, sometimes it is not only money that is necessary. Sometimes you need authority. You need legality and all that. I think that one of the most interesting things about the broadcast center is about the fact that the National Media Commission will be given responsibility for the authorization of frequency for broadcasting. And that is very, very critical because the Constitution is clear that whoever gives is the one who can control or who can withdraw. You know, so that in the National Media Commission, that is such that it is more facilitative of media freedom than control. And so when the media commission comes to the conclusion that a certain conduct by the media is unwarranted, I mean, there is morality about it that if it comes from any other authority. But it is also necessary that when the responsibilities come, there must be the resources to enable implementation. Because, for instance, the observation by Chile is relevant. 
I mean, that with the, there may be the need for review of the law and change it because the law must establish the fact that you must have regional branches. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to have those regional branches without, without legality. But the National Media Commission, as it is now, is, 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 is very I mean, poor in terms of the quality human resource. And I think that we are working on a new scheme of service. Understand that the Public Services Commission has granted approval for the new scheme of service. And so when that happens, it means that the commission will be permitted to do recruitment. And I think that we will factor regionalization as part, decentralization as part of the processes of making the commission more effective and more diffused within within the country, you know, because that the large number of radio and TV stations require that we are present at the regional level to monitor, you know, because there are different languages and we should be able to understand from the perspective of each region, appreciate the nuances of language and all that. And definitely resources are critical. But the primary thing is the legal the authority to do that. And then, because if you don't have the authority, no matter the resources allocated to you, you'll still be ineffective. Um, interesting point. I want to take a quick break. When I return, we, the NMC tried this before, went to court and failed. So the question becomes, have we learned the lessons and what are these lessons? I want to pick the NMC's brain on that. I mean, do they concede now that that draft bill was flawed? And if they do, um, what are their thoughts on how to make this draft bill that is now being crafted better than the, than the previous one? What, what would they recommend should be the difference in this latest one? I'll, I'll pick the thoughts of Suleiman Abrama also on that. Stay with me. So uh, with me here on PM Express, a conversation about um, the space broadcasting and, and how you regulate it um, for, for national good, I guess. It can be very destructive, as you've seen in Kaswa recently, and it can be very good, as you've seen with many results that we here at Multimedia have received. And, but there's no law regulating the space. Um, you wonder how we've survived over the years, and so that's why the conversation is happening on the back of a communique that was issued over the weekend. With me is Suleiman Abrama, is the head of the Media Foundation for West Africa. Um, we 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 have also the uh, president of uh, of Geba, and um, the NMC's uh, head is Yabwide Ibafo. We'll get them shortly because I wanted them to, I wanted the NMC to address the question about the previous law, if there's con agreement that the previous law was flawed as the court held, what would they want, how, what, 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 what different would they want in this particular? How do you make this new draft bill better? Let me, let me bring in uh, the president of, of GEPA, um, who is, is with me. Uh, he's talked about um, that the, they are red line. Um, I mean, beyond which they would they will not accept. Um, uh, you know, in terms of the drafting of this new legislation. But 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 Andy, I mean, going forward, um, I know you are you are, you'll be thinking about sending your your proposals in on this bill, um, and you say you are for it already. Um, how soon do you expect that this uh, broadcasting bill will be drafted um, and? And, and get parliamentary hearing? Okay, um, I will not be able to put timelines to this because this is going to be handled basically by the NMC and it's part of the committee's activity also. But I believe that since we have taken off, there is some document in there which will be shared and would all make our inputs. Um, GIBA has already started. We put together a committee, but we've always had a committee on ethics and um, legislation. So our community has already started work, um, putting together some ideas and some drafts that will be shared again among our members for further input. And then we'll make it available to the necessary authorities to be included or considered in this new draft. Um, 
one thing again that I need to mention, looking at um, what we expect to see, which has also been reiterated by Mr. Brahima and Ms. Ayabuafo, is the fact that um, the NMC need to be on the ground. The NMC need to have footing um, everywhere throughout the country. Um, the resource in terms of human resource, the resource in terms of um, machines, the resource in terms of infrastructure building, um, we believe strongly that with the passage of this law, uh, NMC is going to be well equipped. You know, the point where NMC waits for somebody to make a complaint before they move into a situation to quell it, um, asking stations or newspapers to write rejoinders and give rejoinders, etc., etc. I believe strongly we should be seeing an end, if not entirely, at least we should be reducing that with the passage of this law, because then the NMC will be out there and one of the things I expect the NMC to inculcate into the activity is um, education. And the kind of continuous education that we have through symposia, through fora, um, that discusses contemporary issues and how to handle them, how to go about You see, it is very important that we look at what probably the NMC attempted to do previously and how we see this new one. For instance, previously, it was very clear that the NMC was waiting for you to do something and to bring it for them to um, supervise what you have done or to, to query what you have done. That is how it looked like. And that is what the Supreme Court looked at and said, this um, amounts to censorship to some extent and that you cannot do this. Now, what is going to happen is that we are going to have the standards in place. We might even be able to make input as to say, um, ethically, let us add this to some kind of a guideline. Let us have this as a guideline. We all will come together. The NMC will be out there with us. In the language we understand, um, the NMC being aware of the culture that exists in that area will be able to say, no, you can't say this. No, you have to do it this way. You know, it is not a way of censoring you, but it is a way of guiding you to be more professional. This is a way of making sure that media is serving the people. As Ms. Ayabafu said, this is a way of making sure that media is relevant. You don't leave it to them to do it their own way. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the mushroom ones coming out there, you are able to notice it earlier and then to deal with it before it gets out of hand. Yeah, I mean, Ms. Ayabafu, I mean, the, you, you attempted to introduce this bill before. Um, the Supreme Court struck it down. I wonder, what, what lessons have we learned from that and how are we using that lesson to improve this draft bill? In what specific areas? I mean, as a person, as a person, I, my philosophy is that we should facilitate the need. I think we may have lost them on the line there. Um, let me, can I put that same question to Suleiman Abrahma then? Mr. Abrahma, I mean, what lessons do you think we should learn from that failed attempt to introduce that law that the Supreme Court struck down to improve this draft? In what specific areas? Well, I think that um, when the LI224 was introduced, uh, even as a civil society organization, we expressed our opposition to certain aspects of it, which mainly was, uh, I think, Regulation 3 of the LI, which talks about media organizations having to submit their programming guide or content for authorization before broadcast. And certainly that was something that amounted to censorship. And I was not surprised that the Supreme Court um, uh, had the same view in terms of striking down the, that piece of legislation. I think over the years, we have been sleeping on the job. If you look at uh, a publication that was uh, done in 1993 about Ghana's match to independent broadcasting, the late Justice D.K. Afra made it clear that even as the constitutional statements were coming from a background of a culture of silence and therefore had granted you know, unfettered freedoms towards the, to the media, it was essential that a framework that would ensure you know, um, quality broadcast environment, uh, uh, a 
uh, broadcast landscape that will ensure that public morality, the development of our democracy, and so on and so forth, are ensured, needed to be put in place. And it, he mentioned that the National Media Commission had that responsibility to do so. 20-something years on, we haven't done that. I think that the steps that are being taken uh, perhaps is based on the lessons that we have learned, that not having the framework uh, has given us the failures that we are experiencing. And going forward, I think the way to go is what is happening now. And I must also commend the Ministry of Information and the Minister for adopting this participatory approach uh, in having this whole conversation and the guidelines that we all want to put in place and eventually the bill. I hope that ultimately we will have a landscape that we all desire that will promote our advancement and our democracy. Um, thank you very much, uh, Suleiman Abrama. Thank you, uh, the head of the NMC and also the uh, GIBA president on this. We await to see what final document may come out of this. It is definitely one that we are all interested in. If you watch television and listen to radio, trust me, you'll be interested in it as well. Enjoy the rest of your evening.